Okay, Mr. Fisher, thank you so much for joining me today. Delighted to be here. Your main career was in the television business, screenwriting and producing? It was, it was. Why don't we start a little with that? Can you tell me some of that? Sure. I, um, I studied uh, writing and speech and, and, and drama at Johns Hopkins and uh, had in my mind that I was going to write or act or something. I went to Summerstock and found out I was not an actor, <laughs> decided I'd become a writer. and. Uh, when I got out of the army, I got married very early, and I had a uh, family to support. So I didn't really get to my writing in full time until I was in my mid thirties. And at that, that is, yeah, that yeah, is pretty 30, old. Yeah, I was uh, thirty-five years old when I wrote uh, my first uh, script that was uh, that was shootable, and uh, it was called The Last Child. And uh, through a set of circumstances that involved my brother, who was a casting director at uh, Universal, uh, he got it to uh, a producer who got it to uh, Barry Diller, who was the head of the ABC Movies of the Week, and mm -hmm. uh, he got it to Aaron Spelling. Everybody knows who Aaron Spelling oh, yes. is. And uh, the next thing you know, they're making my movie, and I'm in the movie business. So <laughs> that's, that's great. It, that was a wonderful yeah. movie too. Yeah, it's it's and it's a strange because you know you don't get in the movies that way. This is that one in a million that you know you get very lucky. So. You got your shot. I was lucky. I got my shot. So. You went on to write scripts for some great shows like Beretta and Macmillan and Wife. Can you tell me something about I had written Columbo? Columbo, a spec script, which is something I write for myself. Nobody asked me to do it. Nobody's going to pay me for it. And I got it to Steve, who was the story editor of Columbo, and he got it to the producers, and they said, yeah, we kind of like this, but, you know, it's not something that we're ready to do yet. And so they just sort of put it aside. And then about a year later, I got a call from them. They needed a script, and they called me up and said, would you like to come in and discuss some ideas to do a Columbo? And I said, oh, sure, my favorite show. So Great show. I came in, and I came up with an idea that we uh, that we finally made called Publisher Parish with Jack Cassidy playing an evil publisher. And uh, it turned out very well. And uh, Peter, Peter Falk was uh, thrilled by it. Peter became a fan. and. Uh, Dick Levinson and Bill Link, who created Columbo, got on my bandwagon, and they liked what they saw, and that was the beginning of a great relationship. Then I did Ellery Queen with Dick and Bill, and I did a season with Jim Hutton and Ellery Queen, and when that was over, Peter talked me into, he didn't really have to talk to me very hard about it, but he wanted sure. me to be story editor on Columbo, which I did, and I loved that. and. Uh, so we had a, you know, that was the beginning of, of uh, my career. Uh, sometimes I worked with Dick and Bill, sometimes I worked on my own. I did a mini-series, a couple of them. Uh, Those turned out very well. Yeah. I remember uh, Black Beauty. Black Beauty. And, I uh, think it's still one of the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we did Black Beauty in Kentucky, and we did Once an Eagle, and uh, yeah, we did a lot of a lot of good things. And uh, Dick and Bill and I did a couple of uh, pilots that didn't go anywhere, but, uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's the business for you. But um, you ended up sort of like um, in the whodunit genre. Yeah, yeah, the whodunit genre, and uh, yeah, we did the Eddie Capper mysteries. That was uh, in 1980, and uh, that was a whodunit uh, series. That was one of those 13 episodes. Yeah, yeah. I call it a 13 episode gem, and yeah. there are many out there. Well, it turned out I thought it was a good show, but you know, it's one of those things. You can have a really good show, and I know a lot of them that I have watched, and I've been so disappointed when they disappeared, but they just were either in the wrong time slot or nobody found exactly. them. Or... You created Murder, She Wrote with Richard Levinson and William Link. Can you tell me how that came about? Yes, we do did, we did Murder, She Wrote. Uh, again, it was Dick and Bill and I, and uh, CBS wanted to do a murder mystery. They called Dick, uh, who was our, our ringleader, and said, uh, you know, we'd like to talk to you guys. And he said, okay, I'll bring the boys. So we went over there, and uh, he was trying to pitch... Uh, a premise called uh, Black's Magic, which was uh, about a retired magician who solves uh, mysteries. And he started talking about it, and it became very apparent that they didn't want Black's Magic. They were looking for a, uh, a murder mystery with a female lead. And they didn't specify whether old, young, they didn't really know, but they thought maybe a female lead would be good. They thought they could get a female audience. Interesting. Don't ask me. I don't do demographics, but... Right. So we said, oh, okay, so we were a little disappointed, and uh, so we went off and we came up with the idea of uh, 
murder she wrote, which was uh, basically uh, Agatha Christie and Miss Marple sort of welded into one character. And, uh, Jessica Fletcher. So we had her, you know, being a writer who solved murders, and uh, and we thought it was a good premise, and so uh, we went back and told them about it. They loved it. Harvey Shepard, who was the president of head of programming actually at CBS, loved it. And he said, "Go, go," you know. So uh, we did a story, wrote a script, got it all set. He said, "This is a go project. All we have to do, and this is simple, we the just big. have to find the right actress to play Jessica Fletcher." I said, Not oh, so easy. Oh. So we had in mind uh, 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 Jean Stapleton because we needed somebody who the audience would recognize. And she we, is from um, All in the family. family. And she's a wonderful actress. She's not the ditzy person that you see on All in the Family. She's, she's just a great actress. actress. So we met with her, and she had just lost her husband, and she was doing summer stock. She owned a theater that needed her attention. And when all was said and done, she decided that she didn't want to do it. And um, that was disappointing, and we were terribly afraid that, uh-oh, this project is going to go down the tubes because, you know, we need an actress. And just about that time, Angela Lansbury uh, had let it be known through her agent that she would consider doing a television series. So we sent her a script. Norman Lear had a comedy that he wanted to do with Charles Durning and Angela Lansbury, and he sent her a script, so she was reading both of them over the weekend, and uh, she, she decided to do ours, thank you, and... Uh, oh, yes. And from then on, it was just... Uh, it was a wonderful show. a happy experience. It, most shows, when you work on them, they have problems, you know, there are major problems, often. Uh, with Murder, She Wrote, I don't think we had any. I think from day one we just it was smooth. I decided at the end of this of the seventh year I was not quite sixty, but I thought maybe I should retire. Maybe just you know pack it in. I've got my kids grown and uh, you know I can enjoy myself. And so I decided that that's what I was going to do. And so I sort of sort of retired when I was young. And spent years not writing. And spent many years not writing. And up until this time, pretty much not an author. No, no. no I, I tried to write a novel years ago. And it was terrible. Because I was not used to the... I, I, I was not used to the muscles that you had to use to write a novel. It's a different and, ball game. Different ball game of what I was doing. Finally, was working on scripts and, and dialogue and scenes and visuals. And, and it, that's a whole different thing. And not reading books. So I didn't know what I was doing. And so when it came to a script, I felt comfortable. When it came to writing prose, I was not. And then after I retired, I started reading a lot. And, and for whatever reason, by osmosis, the mechanics of writing prose sort of seeped into my brain. And uh, I came to a point about three years ago where I had an idea for a, a book. and uh, Political thriller? Political thriller. And... Uh, I said, well, you know, I mean, I have nothing better to do. I think I'll sit down and see if I can write this. So I did, and it turned out to be, well, most people who've read it say it's terrific. So I, I've read it, and wonderful, yeah, anyway, exciting, yeah. called The Blood of Tyrants. By the Blood of Tyrants, and uh, it's uh, just a plug. It's for sale on Amazon. It so, is. <laughs> so, <laughs> Along with the, not a sequel, but a, a follow you followed up, that up. Follow up with The Terror of Tyrants, but uh, which is also a good book, I think. Uh, but they're both thrillers, page turners, you know, whatever. And uh, so that proved to me that, gee, I can, I can write a book. And uh, seems like you're having fun doing it too. Yes. So that's what leads us to the Hollywood, the Hollywood murder mysteries. Correct. <laughs> and uh, you know, I just had this thought that you know, today, when you watch the news or you read the newspapers, and even when you're watching television, things like CSI and. Criminal Minds and... Uh, Which are all great shows. I guess, yeah, they are good shows. I enjoy them. I watch them. But they're they're graphic. They're gory. Correct. They're, I don't know whether you'd call them family fair. The world, the world, or at least the, the world watching television has become inured to the violence and the gore. And, and it's a different society than the one I was brought up in. And I said, gee, I'd love to be able to write books about a gentler, gentler kinder time. And, mm -hmm. uh, so I came up with two thoughts. One was to do a murder mystery, the old-fashioned kind of murder mystery, where you have a, a bevy of suspects and you do an intricate plotting and you know this Those and are that, fun. red herrings here and you know and but keeping it going, 
keeping the storytelling going. And then putting it into an era that uh, most people of a certain age, and I would say over 50, maybe over 60, but in that broad area, uh, remember well, which is right after World War II and the Hollywood when the Tyrone Power and Gary Cooper and Clark Gable and all the, the big, big premieres stars, and the big stars were coming back from the war and then they were making the pictures, the studios were prospering. Mm -hmm. And it was just a kind, a kinder, gentler time. And I said, I'm going to marry these two. So I came up with uh, the idea of uh, a hero who, my, my protagonist, who was uh, not a lawyer, not a private detective, not a cop. He's a publicity guy. He's a press agent. He's a guy who works for a studio and publicizes their pictures. Interesting. Put him at the studio. And then in 1947, we do the first book with Joe, Joe Bernardi. And... Uh, it's a murder mystery. And, Called uh, Jezebel in Blue Satin. Jezebel in Blue Satin, and we do that one. And then the, the idea behind the murder mysteries is this, and that's 1947. The second book is 1948, a year later, and it takes place in Mexico, and, uh, where they're filming The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. And, Humphrey Bogart. And Humphrey Bogart and John Houston and uh, Walter Houston and Tim Holt and some others are characters in the book. I've, re I've read both books and it's fun It's fun that the, the real actors and yeah, stuff yeah. are in it. Um, yeah. I find it really, really so fun. So we've taken the celebrities, we've taken Hollywood, and we've taken the murder mystery, and we've welded them all together. And so that's the second book. The third book is called Love Has Nothing To Do With It, and it takes place in 1949. It's a year later. It takes place in Hollywood, and Joe is working hard on White Heat with Jimmy Cagney oh, and Evan O'Brien, and there's a murder mystery going on at the same time. We mesh the two storylines together, and uh, so that's what's going to be. It's going to be uh, 47, 48, 49, 1950, and so on. And we're going to go to 51 and 52. And as long as my fevered brain <laughs> can come up with decent storylines and decent plots, you know, and, and they're exciting and fun to do, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep going. So that's the. Uh, those are the Hollywood murder mysteries. And, uh, and you're doing them what they call self-published? Yes, self-published, uh, only because I can, can I can maintain control. Your imprint is called the Grove Point Press? Grove Point Press, and uh, I have a website, the Grove Point Press, and uh, we have, uh, you know, the books are for sale there, and they're described, and, uh, and uh, you can buy them uh, with autograph by me, and if you care to. Seems to me you're having a lot of fun. I'm having fun. This is a, this is a hobby. Yes. <laughs> so I'm having fun doing it, and I'm doing it basically to keep my mind fresh and uh, have enjoy myself and fill the days. And uh, well, I've enjoyed the books. Yeah. They're they're really exciting, and it's fun to try to figure out, you know, yeah, yeah, who did it, yeah, who did it, who done it. The references, uh, you know, well, to baseball teams, uh, and I do yeah. a lot of research. I try and make sure that I'm correct in everything I do. That this thing was invented by that time. That right. I'm not, you know. I find that stuff fun. And I have the right people, the right restaurants. The restaurants I've got to have been open by then. You know, I don't exactly. want to suddenly have somebody write to me and say, "You know, that place didn't open until <laughs> three 92. years later." Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so they're 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 historically pretty accurate and. Uh, and as I said, fun to read. Yeah, right. uh, It's called The Hollywood Murder Mysteries. That's right. Uh, book one is called Jezebel in Blue Satin. Yep. Available at thegrovepointpress.com. Yes. Also Amazon. Yes. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And hopefully we'll sit down and chat somewhere down the road. I certainly hope so. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye.